Scott is 18 years old and he obviously has an ingrown toenail. It's going on for six or nine months. He's had three antibiotics and it's still not clearing. Obviously he needs surgery. We're going to demonstrate how to do a ring block anesthesia first. So what we do is we just clean the skin with some methylated spirits and then some chlorhexidine. The most important thing here is that you protect your hand when you're giving the anesthetic. Uh, you have to be careful. The needle can go through the toe and out the other side and stab your finger. You keep your fingers out of the way, either at the top or the bottom, but don't have a finger where the needle is going to possibly come out. Scott, you're going to feel a small pinch, all right? This uh, is what we use is Marcaine. Uh, 0.5% is a long acting anesthesia, it lasts about six hours, and then lignocaine 1%, no adrenaline. This lasts about, um, it's fast acting and it lasts about an hour. So you got the, uh, the advantage of a quick acting anesthetic and a long lasting anesthetic. So they're mixed half and half in the syringe. So I have five ml of local anesthetics. I'm going to make a bit of pressure with my finger first. You feel that, Scott? Yeah. Okay. Now you're going to feel a pick, right? Try not to jump, okay? If it's sore, just tell me and I'll stop. Small pinch here. Good man, that's it. You all right? Yeah. I'm gonna to aim to put about one ml down the side here. That's it, very, all right, a bit sore. Can you stick it? Yeah. Bear with me. A lot of pressure, so you have to push hard. That's it, you're feeling a bit sting? Okay. Good man. Right, you've probably had worse than the football pitch, have you? Yeah. Right. Okay, so that's one ml down the side. Now I'm going to go back, come back a little bit and go over the top of the toe. This is under the flexor tendon and just above the, the bony phalanx. So I'm going to try and put one ml across the top. Like this. You all right, Scott? Okay. A bit stingy again. Okay. Now I've got some anesthetic over here so when I go in this side it's going to be a little bit less sore it's still going to be stingy because it hasn't had enough time but it helps a little bit more pressure here with my finger another pinch now Scott all right okay. try not to jump pinch here it's a little easier that time yeah okay so again one ml down the side here it's a bit sore now pardon Okay, good man. A lot of pressure. You have to make sure that the needle is attached to the syringe very tightly, otherwise it can blow back and spurt in your face, which isn't good. All right, we're nearly there. Now I'm gonna put a bit down the side here, just at the back of the nail, pinch here. Small bit down at the back. Are you alright? Yeah. And a small bit down the back on this side. So, sorry, a bit sore there. Yeah. I'm making sure my finger is not anywhere near where the needle might come out. Right, we're nearly there. Now that's a ring block anesthesia. I usually put a little bit extra, just local infiltration, just to make sure that it works well. A small pinch here, Scott. A little bit up here. This is a bit sore, this part. You alright? Yeah. Bit stingy, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Just infiltrating locally as well as a ring block. And this will take five to ten minutes to work. You have to wait and be patient. Got a little bit of local infiltration, especially into this side here where all the excess granulation tissue is. Bit sore? Yeah. Can you stick it? Good man, we're 90% we're there now, right? A lot of pressure here just to get the local in, but you can see that the skin is going a bit white. That's going to make sure that he, the next stage he'll feel absolutely nothing. Last bit here. Good man, almost there. The last bit here. Okay, you feel that? Yeah. Okay. There was one ml down the side, one ml across the top, one ml down the other side, and then one ml local infiltration, one ml local infiltration, five mls in total.
We're going to wait for five minutes to let that go numb. Now we've had the anaesthetic in for 10 minutes, a ring block anaesthesia with some local infiltration. Feels very numb, Scott, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to clean the foot, with, uh, sorry, the toe with some uh, chlorhexidine. And then we're going to put on a tourniquet to try and minimize the bleeding. Because blood interferes with everything. If you're using phenol, it's very important to have a bloodless field. And if you're using radio surgery, equally you don't want blood in the way. So this is the easiest way to create a bloodless field. So we put on a sterile gauze and then a digital tourniquet. Bit of pressure here, Scott. Uh, we'll just roll that on. And now that will make it a relatively bloodless field. Not absolute, but relatively. You have to be very careful with this procedure if patients are on anticoagulants. We try and stop them if possible. Um, that's not always possible. So you can see the toe has gone a little bit white. Now we're ready to split the nail. I've already cleaned. So this is a nail nippers. We're going to split it down a quarter on either side. So here is a quarter. Split down. And here's a quarter. So a good bit of pressure here. That's all? No. Okay. okay, so once you've cut down the nail, then we use the nail chisels. So it's a chisel, pretty much uh, like any chisel. It's going to split the nail under the periungal skin. So a lot of pressure here, we're going to split it right down. And then split here, and split it right down. We lift off the nail, so we get in under the nail. You feeling anything, Scott? No. Get right down to the base of the nail, uh, and then we twist it like you open a can of sardines. So we're twisting it off, and just be careful not to lift the nail that's left behind, it's only lift the bit that's coming out. So you can see that pretty much that's the whole of the corner of the nail come out. Uh, it's a nice kind of feathery edge here and that kind of a nice angle so we got it all out. If you leave a little bit behind it could grow back as a spicule which is not serious but is a bit uncomfortable for the patient. So this bit we can take away some of the granulation tissue so we can see what where the nail is and then we take out this bit of the nail. Now we want to, we finished removing the nail, so we've left half the nail behind, we've taken out a quarter on this side, we've taken out a quarter on this side. Now we want to destroy the nail bed to stop it from growing back in these two corners. There's two ways of doing that, one is to use phenol, uh, which is kind of more the traditional way, or you can use radiosurgery. Obviously the surgeons in the hospital, they often cut out the nail bed surgically, but that's a very traumatic experience, the patient's on crutches for a week after it, and it's no more successful than phenol or radiosurgery. I'm just going to demonstrate how to do phenol first, and then I'm going to demonstrate how to do radiosurgery after. For the phenol, we use um, swab it, it's, it's a phenol, it's a long shelf life, it's an 89% phenol. This has a shelf life of about 18 months, so it's very handy. So it comes in a little sterile container uh, with a little swab. The swab is um, in a little pot that contains the phenol, like this. So what you do is you just, I can show you the camera here, you just press in like this and that soaks the swab in phenol. That's 89% so it's very caustic, very toxic phenol and that's ready to go into the corners. Now I'm not going to use the phenol but just I'm going to use a dry swab just to show if you had the swab. We normally get the tongue depressor please. So. We normally protect the surrounding skin. I'll do it on this side just to make sure if any phenol leaks out that you're not going to burn the surrounding skin. 
So a little bit of any moisturizer, greasy moisturizer will do, emulsifying ointment or paraffin gel. This is hydromol. Then you get the swab, which is soaked in the phenol, and you just put it into the corner in here, and then you just make sure it goes down well. And then you just agitate it a little bit and leave it in there. You should time this on a clock for about uh, one minute. Moving it around, try and make sure that there's not too much blood. If there's blood, you have to abandon the procedure and start all over with a fresh swab. That's how to do it with phenol. After one minute, then you can do the other side of this toe. Probably should use a fresh swab. And that's a minute. But what we're going to do is instead of phenol, we're going to use radio surgery. This is the radio surgery. There's the tip, like this. So this is using radio waves to destroy the nail bed. And we have a little electrode. And the electrode uh, is Teflon coated on one side, which is inactive. And then it's just a bare electrode on the other side. So everything on this side is going to get burnt. Every time, everything on this side won't get burnt. We're going to hold it with the burning side down so as to try and destroy the nail bed. We're just going to do this for about 10 seconds. You okay, Scott? Yeah. Feel anything? No. When you're doing this, sometimes you hear a bit of crackling. You see a bit of smoke. You can smell a bit of smoke. So it's about five seconds, and we do the same on the other side. You see a bit of smoke there coming through, and a little bit of crackling. And do this side again. Another five seconds. On this side here, you see a little bit of smoke. If we're using phenol after the one minute on this side and one minute on this side, then we'd soak it in methylated spirits, which would neutralize it. Uh, obviously, there's no need to do that with radio surgery, so we just clean the wound and then dress it. Right? So we normally dress it with a bit of bactrograss, which is chlorhexidine, and pressure a pressure dressing. It's important then that the patient rests at home. Are you getting a lift home, Scott? Yes. Yeah, so sit in the back seat on, in the car on the way home and put the foot up in the seat beside you. And then when you get in home, lie up on the couch and put your foot up in the armrest of the couch for the rest of today. Right. And as you off the tourniquet, it'll probably bleed a bit. Not too much. Maybe a little bit of bleeding. So it's important to put a pressure dressing on that. So this is a chlorhexidine. And then just some pressure dressing. If it bled through this, Scott, you just add more dressing to it, right? Okay. But if you keep it elevated tonight, it shouldn't bleed. Uh, if it's sore tonight, Scott, you can take two Panadol at about six o'clock to see, well, maybe about eight or nine o'clock this evening before you go to bed. Uh, take two Panadol. If it breaks you during the night, take another two Panadol. Tomorrow you can go back to school or college or whatever and uh, do what you like and then Two days later, you take off all these dressings and you just bathe it with some boiled cooled water and put an antiseptic into the water, like dilute Dettol, and then dry it off and rub on an antiseptic cream, like Savanon cream, and just cover it with a band-aid, okay? okay. I'm going to give you the written instructions. I think I gave you those already. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll give you the written instructions again. Okay.